this. And what we what we want to what we don't want to do is put it up, ushering in the anointing to whoever's up front or to the praise and worship team. Every in here, everybody's on the praise and worship team. If you're here, you got a voice, don't you? You can speak, can't you? Okay, then you all right. Then, then you're on the praise and worship team. You just you you don't need a microphone. God's not deaf; He can hear you right where you're at. Okay, so everybody's on the praise and worship team. Everybody's on the prayer team because you come to preach there as prayer, you can pray, can't you? So you're on the prayer team. Or you're on the praise team. You're on the worship team. Amen? Okay. Now, Psalm 149, and we'll do very little uh, review because we're kind of going a little bit different. Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise you the Lord. Sing it to the Lord a new song. Okay, let me define the word praise, okay? It's important that... Because God wants us to get this. God wants us to learn how to relate to God, how to communicate with God. You have to understand, sing his idea. Praise is his idea. Worship is his idea. He enjoys it. He loves it. He's looking forward to it. When you come to the place of understanding, God is so excited about our church service. When God people come to sing to him and to praise him and to worship. When when I met Pastor Jan and I, I fell in love, I began to love Pastor Jan. I begin to sing to Pastor Jan because I would be moved. Come on, I would be moved upon. Come on, when you love God, come on, when you love God, you can't shut up. You've got to sing. You've got to praise Him. You've got to worship. You've got to shout because you're, you're being moved by something. All right. Okay, so praise you, the Lord. The word praise means, it means to boast. It means to make a clear sound. How many can make a sound? means to make a show, see, when you're dancing around. You're, you're demonstrating to the devil. Get out of here. The, the, Satan can't stand for Jesus to be the center. When you make Jesus the center, demons just to be, they to be get, blocked, get blocks away from that place. It means to, to be clamorously foolish. It means to rave. It means to celebrate. Uh, uh, it means to shine. Let me, put, let me do, let's say something about that word celebrate. When, if you really get a revelation... You get a revelation that, and knowing you're knower, you could be in hell right now. Yes. You could be in hell right now. And the love of God, the grace of God, the gift of salvation, yes. God gave you the gift of salvation. Yes. You will begin to celebrate how good God is. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yes. You begin to celebrate. Here's what, we're, here's what we want to do. We want to get you to the place that you enjoy your salvation, yes. that you enjoy church, yes. that you enjoy God. That in His presence is fullness of joy. Okay, now, okay, praise you, the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song and uh, uh, a new song and His praise in the congregation of saints. Let the Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. And we'll, we've already sh- preached on this, so I'm not going to. Let them praise His name in the dance. Okay, we saw. When the children of Israel, after 400 years of bondage, when God sent to deliver Moses to them to bring them out after 10 plagues, and they were camped by the Red Sea, and Pharaoh, 600 chariots, and every other chariot in Egypt came to bring them to pull them right back into bondage God just brought them out of. When they, when they were drowned, when their enemies were drowned in the Red Sea, type of baptism, type of water ba- baptism, and which brings separation, the separation from the world. So on this side, they drowned, their enemies drowned, so then Miriam grabs the tambourine, she begins to go out dancing. She grabs the tambourine, she begins to go out to dance, and the other women begin to go out after her and dancing. She's, the word uh, says, Miriam the prophetess. The word prophetess means an inspired woman. So the church, she's a type of the church. She ought, we ought to be inspired. We ought to be so inspired, so inspired to come to the church, so inspired to read the Bible, so inspired to talk to God. We call it prayer. But we talk to God, and so inspired to sing, to pray, to worship, so inspired to come to church, so inspired to get in His presence. Yeah. So there's an inspiration. She was inspired. Then we saw when David became king, then uh, what he wanted to do, is he became king, and he, he went and got the ark. When Saul was king, they didn't even look where the, they didn't even ask where the ark was for many years. And they went and got the ark, and they, they began to bring it back. When he realized, I'm going to bring back the ark, which represents the presence of God, Bringing the presence of God to the people called to be king over, okay? So he's so rejoicing, he takes off his kingly robes, and he's, he's dressed, well, uh, way, you may put it a different way, he just dressed as a common man. Because what he realized as king 
of king over Israel, he right there was a king over him. So he was worshiping someone higher than him. Okay? The lesser worships the greater. That's what David understood. So that's why he took out the kingly robe because he realized he was in the presence of the king of kings. Okay? So David comes back and the Bible said this. David danced before the Lord with, with all of his might. Okay, now. So, I, I, you know, he took off some clothes to keep him sweating. Come on, say to him, God, seriously. Come on, something just keeping him back. So he just began to begin to shed some things. And, uh, you know, one or two of you may shed a coat or a sweater or something here in just a little bit, okay? Okay, so then David, then he began dancing with all of his might, and then his wife began to persecute him and mock him and ridicule him. And, uh, and the end result was uh, David... David wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, allow that to, to hurt him or wound him. He said, I'm going to even praise louder. I'm going with more energy. And she became barren. And you watch people. You watch people that, were, that will mock singing, praise and worship in the presence of God. And there'll be a barrenness and a deadness upon them. There'll be critical and fault finding. And judge. They'll criticize you for dancing. Come on, saints of God. And what I'm saying is, it's very, it said right here, Dance, David danced before God. Miriam danced before God. and said, we're going to praise him in the dance. How many, can, how many going to praise him in the dance? Okay. We're not going to be ashamed. If it's biblical, we're going to do it. Just let the chips fall where they may. Some people may not like it, but we're going to, if it's biblical, we're going to, this is a place where you can come in here. If it's in the Bible, we're going to do it. Okay. So let the praise him in the dance. Let's sing in the hymn of the tambourine and the harp. Because why? Because God takes pleasure in his people. Okay. We have, and we, we saw in, in Zephaniah that, that uh, God, uh, he enjoys, he will joy over He While we sing in the hymn, we're praising him, we're worshiping him, then God begins to sing in joy over you. So the, here's the way, I, uh, one of the ways I explain praise and worship. Singing, see, when we, well, well let, me, let me back up. From the earth, vapors, vapors goes up, moisture goes up in the air. And it, enough moisture, or vapor go up in the air, it forms a cloud. Enough moisture getting that cloud, moisture going up. Enough moisture getting that cloud, rain comes down. Moisture going up, rain coming down. See, that's the type of church. Yeah. Our song, our praise, our worship, we, we're singing to God. We're, we're, our, for, our focus is vertical. Our focus is God. We're not waiting for someone to call us out and prophesy. We're talking to him that prophesied. He is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so you're going to meet with God such a way. You're going to get vertical. You're going to praise him. And this is what it says. Very important you understand this, just this little part right here. Sing it to the Lord. Don't just sing and let your words fall to the ground. Sing it to the very heart of God. Sing to God. God when we begin dancing here a little bit, don't just be, don't be horizontal. And don't let people be your focus. Let God be your focus. The more that you focus on the God, the more that you sing upon God, the more that you think upon God, the more that you take your thoughts into captivity, the more anointed you become. Because you can dance and sweat, not even feel presence. There'll be, there'll be an energy from the music. There'll be an energy from the dancing. But if you want to be anointed, if you want the presence of God, you want the power of God, if you want to honor God, if you want to meet with God such a way, here's what I, I want what God gave Moses at that burning bush. I believe every time I talk with God, ought to be the bush ought to be burning. Come on, saints of God. <coughs> I want my heart to burn. I don't, I, I have... I have a very strong allergy that I never want to get delivered of. I have a strong allergic reaction to dead, boring, dry church services. It bothers me. I have an allergic reaction. I can't stand it. Come on, saints of God. And I don't want to get healed from that. I don't want to be comfortable at dead church services. Okay, so let, let, me, let me put this another way. Um, probably, oh. Sarua, Canada, 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 Sarua, Canada,
Interpretation. Traditional church services, okay? You say, you say that's out of order. No, dead, dry, boring church service. That's out of order. Come on, this is what we want. We want, we want the Holy Ghost to have freedom in here, okay? That's what we want. We want freedom in here, okay? Thank you, precious brother, for obeying the Lord. If you don't, you don't understand. Uh, we're, we're praying that one day Pastor Brian gets some passion. <laughs> The atmosphere has been taken. Yes. The atmosphere has been taken. Yes. I said in my studio. I said, enter in, enter in, enter in, enter in. The atmosphere has been taken for you. The atmosphere has been taken for you, for you to enter in. There was deadness, deadness, deadness. The Lord released life, life. I am released life, life, life for you. There is deadness, deadness, deadness. Confess your sin, confess your sin, and ask the Lord to forgive thee. He will forgive thee, confess your sin. Confess your sin, and the Lord shall forgive thee, shall forgive thee. And you shall enter into life, into life, into life. Into life, into life, into life. And then you can move forward. You will not be stopped. You can move forward. You are called to move forward, not to lag behind. I want you free. I want you free. I want you free. See, uh, oh. l- let me put the same, say the same thing another way. In Jeremiah, it's a cursed is the man put his trust in man. So if you wait for someone, some man or some woman to come to minister to you and ignore God in his house, you may have a long wait for a move. But see, blessed is the man to put his trust in God. So you have access to God. So what we're teaching you is reach out and touch him for yourself. Sing to him. Praise him. Worship him. Give God glory. Give God honor. Get vertical. Give him your attention. Give God your focus. Don't let him walk by. Reach out and touch him. If I get you, touch the hem of his garment. So a little bit we're going to... We uh, in, in Psalm 22... It says, God will inhabit the, God will inhabit the praises. So Satan knows that. So Satan going to, well, while you can be at the right place at the right time, Satan doesn't want you to do the right thing. So if, if you, you could be in church and the song service going on, and they, the devil will try to get you daydreaming. In his presence is fullness of, God will inhabit the, God will inhabit the praises. So Satan doesn't want you to praise. Because if you begin praising God, who shows up? The Holy God, the presence of God. Now, in His presence is full of some. See, and the joy of the Lord is your. No, I'm not talking down. I'm not talking down. I'm not talking down. I'm saying, I'm going to go back to the very beginning, that I apologized for leadership. Because if I know that God helps to praise us, then His then his presence come, and then his presence is full of joy, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Then what what message is my life sending to the spirit realm 
if after 10, 20, 30, 40 years of so-called Christianity, I still don't have enough of God to open up my mouth to stand up and give honor to God. I, uh, I guess I have to turn around. One amen. See, I'm not, I'm not talking then. I, I, that's why in the very beginning, I said, we've taught people wrong. We've taught people wrong to come listen to us. No, we got to get to God. I got to get to God. We got to give you free. We got to give the Holy Ghost freedom. What you don't want to do is wait for someone to come to minister to you when you can minister to God yourself. You can activate God for yourself. Turn on me. Come on. I can turn the light switch on and the lights come on. You can turn the switch on, begin to praise Him, make and focus upon God, and God will show up. And then His presence is full of some joy. You get so anointed, you can't shut up. You can't, come on, you, you can't sit down. What we want to do is over and over again teach you, you're free. You've been free. You've been set free. You've been set free. The jail cell has been opened. What are you doing in the body? Come out of the jail cell. Come out of the place of limitation. Come out of the place of limitation. My God, my God. Come on, praise him. Praise him. David did before the Lord with all of his might. My God, my God. Get, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay, um, verse 4, God will take pleasure in his people. We have to understand praying, singing, praising, worship, Bible study, God thought of all these things. It's a way that he loves to spend time with you. When, uh, when I met Pastor Jan and I started spending time with Pastor Jan, and when I began falling in love with Pastor Jan, there was not enough time in the day to spend with Pastor Jan. So even when we went out, and I'd go home maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, then we'd talk on the phone till 4 o'clock in the morning. Then there wasn't enough time, so then I asked her to marry me so we could, come on, spend all the time together. When you stop dating Jesus on Sunday morning and you marry him, my God, my God. Come on, saints of God. Come on, somebody praise him. Stop dating him. Marry him. Put the ring on. Come on, saints of God. Put the ring on. Surrender your heart. Marry Jesus. And his presence is fullness of joy. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to enjoy His presence. My God, my God, the presence of God. Now verse 4, I've been trying to get to this one, one, one point right here. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Now, when, when you get saved, well, let me use it myself. Before I got saved, my mind was carnal. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Okay, when, when you get saved and you really get saved and you, and you come out of darkness, you begin to enter, in, enter into light. You will focus on the anointing and the character and the fruits of someone more than their body. Come on, say to God. Don't shut me down because or, or you act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I, I understand. You're sitting by someone you can't. <laughs> But when you when you get to the place that the character, the fruits, you can fall in love with a plain Jane, but she's so anointed, she's the most beautiful person on earth to you. Come on, Saint of God, let's just call it just let's just speak plain here tonight. God will beautify the meek with salvation. Some people you don't even know who they are. You see them out of the public, and you're going to know that they're saved. Okay, turn to Isaiah chapter sixty-one. Hey, you remember now we're talking about going to beautify the meek of salvation? Yeah. Let me just bring a little bit of this to you. Uh, verse 3, 
to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to say uh, sin will cause us to mourn, but I'll tell you what else will cause us to mourn. Dead, phony religion oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calls us to mourn. Okay, so the God said, I'm going to appoint to them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for their ashes. You can trade in your pile of ashes, and God will give you beauty. And the oil of joy for mourning. How many want some oil of joy? God's raising up oil-filled believers. Oil-filled. You're going to be oil-filled. Right? To give them beauty for ashes. Oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God received glory and taking an ash heap and make it to a tree of righteousness. Come on, give God a praise. Okay, now, in the, in the same chapter there, verse 9, And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge him, that they are all the seed which God has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Not because of the church, not a ministry, not a person. Not my income. I will rejoice in the Lord. The word rejoice means glad, be cheerful, be joyful. In the Lord my soul shall be joyful in my God. Why? Because he has clothed me. He clothed me with what? The garment of salvation. He clothed me with the garment of salvation and covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments as a bride adorned herself with jewels. Now let me back up just a minute. In other words, here's how... Here's how Here's how God's going to see you in discerning people. He's going to see you as the bridegroom decketh herself with ornaments, as the bride adorned herself with jewels. I'm going to tell you, uh, just stop and think just for a moment that for one year, one year, Esther prepared herself for one night with the king. One year of preparation for one night with the king. A bride will prepare herself. Now, let me, just a couple more things here. Okay, I want to I want to touch base on this. I feel like the Holy Spirit wants, wants this part right here. Okay? As, a bri- as the bridegroom decketh himself with ornament, and the bride adorn herself with jewels, for the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to bring forth... So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Righteousness and praise will spring forth. Amen. See, that's going, that's going to be, you are his righteousness. And praise will spring, spring forth out of your mouth. And other people will see that your ash heap has been changed, come on, into a tree of righteousness. And a garment of praise, okay? That God's changing you, okay? All right, uh... Let's see how I want to do this. Okay, let's go to uh, Revelation 3, 5 real quick. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5 says, He that overcometh. Now, those things are going to try to overcome you. Tiredness is going to try to you. Hurts, wounds, unforgiveness, bitterness, rejectment. Pride, selfishness, anger, different things that come against you to try to keep you from getting to God. And, but he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment that speaks of holiness. And I will not blot out his name from the Lamb's book. So you're going to be clothed in white raiment. How many want that? Okay, now what I'm saying is that there is a place in God that you grow into. There is a place in God where being so clean spiritually it's better than anything that you did in immorality, anything in the world. Being clean and being washed and being pure is so much better than being impure. That you fall in love with purity and you see impurity as a coiled snake with poison. Now, that, that's where it will take you. Let me move a little bit more and then uh, we're going to get ready to go on. Okay, uh, verse 18, the same chapter. Verse 18 says, I counsel thee by me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, that spiritual rich, and white raiment that you may be clothed. Okay, there's a clothing in righteousness. 
And when you get clothed in righteousness and find white linen, there's a purity, there's a holiness, there's a righteousness. Haven't you, haven't you been able to look at people and see an anointing of holiness? Yes. And the, there's people sometimes, so, sometimes I see such anointing on people, I don't stand and talk to them face to face. I stand sideways in case I might accidentally sneeze. I don't want a lightning bolt. I don't want to get struck down with a lightning bolt. I'm telling you, the fear, there's a fear of the Lord. I'm serious. There's a fear of the Lord that uh, you, you're so careful around some people that you may be rich in white raiment, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. See, the, uh, the shame, you're not dressed in fine white linen, not clothed in righteousness, not, not having on the garment of salvation. Anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Um. Uh, Look right here just a minute, and I, I, I hope I can communicate this. Uh, you're, you're not the problem. My inability to communicate sometimes can be the problem. Some of the times that you will grow the most is when your eyes are open and you see who you really are, not who you thought you've been, not who you think you are. When your eyes are open, you see yourself through the eyes of God you see, as Peter did, as Isaiah in chapter 6, woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean yes. fill in the blank. Yes. What I'm saying is, the way to grow is to see that. If you can't see that, then that's what we call spiritual blindness. So you pray that you, pray that you may see that you, your eyes would be in order to eyesight. You can see who you really are, where you really are. Have you ever, uh, I remember one time God telling me, uh, you're not as far as long as you think you are. Yeah, me too. That's the one. <laughs> and because this is many years ago, I'm going, oh, we're, going to, we're going to have revival. I was so full of myself, yeah. so demonized, <laughs> that I would have killed it in an hour, if not a day. Amen. Come on, saints of God, I'm yeah. serious. I'm serious. But I said that to say this, that if you could handle that, you will grow the most. Amen. You will grow the most in times that it's painful. Yes. It's called circumcision of heart. Amen. And you want to plead with God. And see, well, here's what we need. We need shepherds. We don't need hirelings. We need shepherds that look us in the eye, tell us the truth about ourselves. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yes. Yes. And then we need, we need sheep that will be teachable. Yes. Come on. They won't spend the next 25 years texting and tweeting yeah. horrible things and making phone calls about the preacher that loved them enough to tell them the truth. Come on, say to God, you've got to pray. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. All right. What, you'll learn what David learned, that God, God is our, our defense. Okay, uh, let's turn to Revelation 19. I'm stumbling a little bit because I've got so many different directions to go. I'm trying to do this as uh, just as we go along. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 5. A voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were, I heard as it were the voice, <coughs> the voice of a multitude, <coughs> and the voice of many waters. In a voice of a mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord thy God, omnipotent reign. Let us be glad. Let us be glad. Let us rejoice. Let us give honor to him for the marriage. The marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said to me, right, blessed are they that call to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, these are the true sayings of God. Okay, now, I want to balance that. Turn to Isaiah 52. I was going to go a whole lot different direction, but... Uh, I'll do some here just a little bit. Prophetic team, tune in. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake! Awake! I pray every day. God, awaken me. Awaken me spiritually. Give me other slumber. Awake! Awake! 
Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment. And we're not talking about natural, uh, natural clothing. We're not talking about Macy's and Jones store. We're talking about robes of righteousness, fine white linen. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, thy holy city. For henceforth there shall be no more come into the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself. Shake thyself from the dust. Come on. Sometimes you've got to shake something off of you. You've got to shake an attitude. You've got to shake an opinion. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake that forgiveness. You've got to shake up that name. You've got to shake up that full tiny critical spirit. You've got to shake off that life. You've got to shake off that unforgiveness. You've got to shake it off. Shake. Shake thyself. Come on. we got to shake ourselves. Come on, saints of God. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself. Loose yourself. Now look right here just a little bit. Because before the clock strikes midnight, we're going to be in this back section. And we're going to help you loose yourself. <laughs> we're going to say two words. <laughs> See those de- deceiving little demons. That when we go back in there, that will deceive you and get you in little discussions. Oh, I, I want to go back there, but I want, I want to talk to this person. And so, week after week, session after session, I'm here, but I'm not there. I come to deliver church and tell other people, you need to come to this deliver church. But when it comes to deliver time, I'm not. Did I slip into a funeral home almost? I thought, but... <laughs> See, we can, we can come to prayer time, and hell doesn't care if we come to prayer as long as we don't pray. We can be in a song service, and hell doesn't care if we come to a song service as long as we don't sing. Amen. We can come to church, but hell doesn't care if we come to church as long as we don't meet with God in such a way our life has changed. And we end up trusting in our church attendance. Amen. We put some money in the offering. Therefore, God, you ought to do something for me when we in his house and ignore him. Okay, so there are certain things. So shake yourself. Let me go shake yourself. Amen. Loose yourself from thy bands of the neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Loose yourself. Come on, loose yourself, O captive daughter of Zion. We're going to say two words here a little bit. It's going to help you lose yourself. Come on, Saint of God. God wants the captain to be set free. Oh, captain, daughter. The church needs to be set free from the chain that's binding us up. Okay, now, I felt like the Spirit of the Lord gave me this next scripture. And it's in Zechariah, Z-E-C-H. Right before Malachi, which is right before the New Testament, right before Matthew, go to the book of Matthew, turn left two blocks. (laughs) Now, I want to say this, that Here's, here's what God knows, and I know this, and you know this. The truth is this. There's no one on earth that's always 100% perfect all the time. We all have strengths and weaknesses. It's not that you don't love God. It's not that you're not saved. I have weaknesses. Come on, saints of God. i got things I'm working on. God gives me homework. I'm working on that. We want to create an atmosphere here. That everybody understand. I may have A, B, C. You may have X, Y, Z. You put up with me, but with my A, B, C, I put up with you with your X, Y, and we're all grow together. See, so we don't judge, we don't criticize. You got to deal with this. I got to deal with that. We all got to deal with something. What you don't want to do is come to church for long periods of time and not deal with your stuff because everybody got some stuff. If you come on, if you deal with your stuff, you'll grow. If you all you do is criticize and fault find other people for their stuff. And you don't deal with your stuff. 
then you're judgmental, see, and, you, and you're not really blessed. Now, I said that, but say this, okay? Because I'm trying to put these scriptures off the cuff here kind of together. In verse 3, it says, Now Joshua were clothed with filthy garments. This is not Joshua, you know, that uh, Moses, Joshua, this different Joshua. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and said unto him that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Have you ever you ever seen someone just walk in with a spirit of lust on them? You ever seen someone walk in with a spirit of anger upon them? Have you ever seen someone walking with a spirit of hate upon them? See, that's the filthy garments. See, and I will say this again: everybody has something. If 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 you and I pretend we have no needs, we're going to hinder God because God said, "I shall supply all of your." But if we pretend we have no needs, then that's pride, that's self-righteousness. I don't need your God. I don't need, and we we lie. We use self-deception. We lie to ourselves. And in other words, let me put it this way. Let me let me say this again. I want to make sure I'm communicating well, because when it comes time, deliverance time. The more the people need deliverance, it seems like the more they avoid, because their demons. Number one goal is what? Stay in their body. So demons say, oh, don't go back there. Distract you, disrupt you, disfocus you. Don't, don't go back there. Because the demons, number one, to stay in, goal is to stay in your body. Because, see, they, can, they, can, they need a body to express their nature in. Okay? So what you, when it's time to pray, what, you, what would be a good idea to do? When it's time to sing, what would we all be doing? When it's time to praise, we ought to be. When it's time to worship, we ought to be. When the word being preached, we ought to. When it's time for come out time, we ought to. When the gifts of the Holy Spirit's operating, we want an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. When it's time to dance, we ought to. Now we're going to come in and land it for a little bit. So, prophetic team, tune in. Sometimes I'll say things in the natural to make a spiritual point. Because there's one or two people here besides me. That in our heathen days, we didn't just dance. We danced on the tabletops. Come on, saints of God. Unashamedly. Come on, saints of God. Boldly. Now, if we tell other people that the new wine is better than the old, and under the influence of the old, we dance on the tabletops, then we ought to be more powerfully, we ought to dance higher, Come on, say, if, how many ever, come on, some of us here are sweating a nightclub. So the, the, goal, the goal of church service, come on, there's some people, come, we don't, see, we got air conditioning, we got ceiling fan, we got, we got window air conditioner. we don't need individual, come on, we sweat in the ball game, we sweat in the nightclub, we sweat at parties, we can sweat for Jesus, can we? Come on, give God a praise. We're going to come in for a landing. So I said, take away the filthy garments from him. Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee. I'm gonna, he says right there, I'm going to change your raiment. I'm going to change your clothes. I'm going to get that filth off of you. I'm going to get that immorality, that unclean spirit off of you. I'm going to deliver you from unrighteousness, and I'm going to clothe you with righteousness. Come on, give God a praise. We'll go. Stop right there. <coughs> Let's wait upon the Lord here just briefly. And then... Uh, well, we're turning. I, 